So I'm currently located in Broome, Western Australia, which is on the northwestern part of the country, just here. Now, interestingly enough, that is further from Sydney than Perth is. And from Perth to Broome is almost 1,000 nautical miles. Perth is down here, Sydney is over on the east coast, and Broome is on the northwestern part of Australia. What I was able to do the other night was take another observation of these same satellites that I'm able to see in Sydney, Australia and Perth, Australia. This is Himawari 9, this is Himawari 8. And later in the night, I was able to capture the same group of satellites that we saw the other day in Perth. So think about the distances from Sydney to Broome is 1,822 nautical miles, more than 3,350 kilometers. And yet we could see the same group of satellites from each of these locations. Now, from Japan, Himawari 8 and 9 are also visible. If I was able to get up there with my telescope, I could prove that. But I guarantee if there are any astronomers in Japan willing to make this observation, they will easily be able to see this group of satellites, Himawari 9, Himawari 8, and the following three. So what objects are we looking at that are visible over such a large area of the Earth? What do you think, Emma? Balloon! It's not a balloon. It's a balloon. You're just being silly now. Tell Daddy really what it is. It's not a balloon. So this is the telescope that I've been using for the satellite observations in Perth and also in Broome. It is a Skywatcher ED72 refractor fitted with a ZWO 183MC color camera. Supported by an Ioptron Smart EQ Pro Plus mount, this is an equatorial mount which is ASCOM compliant and that means it can be controlled by a computer and provides feedback to the software on the computer. You'll notice the angle is facing upwards at 18 degrees. That is because the mount is now correctly aligned for Broome, Australia at a latitude of 18 degrees south. The benefit of using an ASCOM compliant mount is that it can provide feedback to the software of its precise pointing position. And here we can see the azimuth and the altitude of where the telescope is pointing at this particular time. So in a recent video, I provided the precise altitude and azimuth angles to the Himawari 8 satellite from both Sydney, Australia and Perth, Australia. And I challenged flat earthers to use those angles to calculate an altitude of the satellite. Now, to be honest, I didn't expect any of them to even attempt that because most flat earthers just play this game at the rookie level. The more advanced levels are far too challenging and it always results in a flawless victory for the globe anyway. But one person did accept the challenge. It wasn't a flat earther. It was our good friend Walter Bislin who has already produced a number of amazing calculators that can be used for helping us understand the true shape of the earth. In this case, he has produced a calculator that allows us to use the angle measurements from various locations to determine the distance of a satellite. And here we see a comparison of those angles from Perth and Sydney that indicate where the satellite is located based on the actual angles provided. You can see that it puts the satellite over the equator. As a comparison, using those same angles on a flat Earth has the satellite north of the equator in this case. And furthermore, the angles of observation don't even intersect. They intersect nicely on the globe. So when we scroll down further, we can see more information. Here we have the two observer locations, in this case, Sydney, Australia and Perth, Australia. We then have the calculated satellite position on the globe and the calculated satellite position on the flat Earth. Now using the values I provided to Walter, it shows an altitude for Himawari 8 of 35,805 kilometers 
and a latitude that is just one minute from the equator. So extremely close to the equator. For the calculation on a flat earth, it is showing latitude north 4 degrees 32 minutes at an altitude of 5,862 kilometers. Now let's take a look at the actual figures for Himawari 8. And we can do that by hitting this green button. Remember, the altitude calculated on the angles provided, 35,805 kilometers, with just one minute of latitude difference from the equator. Himawari 8 is clearly on the equator and at an altitude of 35,794. So using the verifiable angles from Sydney and Perth, Australia to Himawari 8 in this calculator produces a result that is extremely close to the published position for Himawari 8. The values for the flat earth are not even close. But they generate a problem for flat earth also because the calculated altitude on a flat earth is 5,858 kilometers. What balloon can operate that high? And on some of the flat earth models that I have been shown, that is actually higher than what they tell us the sun is. Balloon! It's not a balloon. It's a balloon. You're just being silly now. So I'll play two clips now, which are time-lapse footage of satellites entering and reappearing from the Earth's shadow in Broome. And one of the benefits of Broome is that we are a long way from light pollution. I was actually down at the port, which is to the south of the Broome Township itself. There's Broome Township, and I was just right down here on the point, well away from any light pollution. So in the time lapse, the satellites are extremely clear and I was able to increase the exposure to 20 seconds and more. Now at least one flat earther has been in a panic for the last two days over these clips showing the satellites disappearing into the Earth's shadow. I'll leave it to my friend Where's Wally as he is planning to make a video showing the many failures of this flat earther. But just to give you an idea, you may notice in this footage there is a very small white dot here. You could easily be forgiven for believing that is a star. But when we stop the tracking on the mount and the satellites become stationary, this small white dot is still stationary. So it wasn't a star and it's not a satellite because it was stationary when the satellites were moving. It is in fact a dead pixel on the sensor of the camera, sometimes called a hot pixel, and it shows up as a small white dot. In astrophotography, we have tools that can remove the effect of hot pixels from the final image, but in this particular footage, you will see that here. Now this flat earther mistakenly identified that as a satellite and claimed that the footage was debunked. Inability to identify a hot pixel for what it is is just one of the many failures you'll see in Where's Wally's video. So as we approach the equinox, those satellites will disappear for a longer period of time as they are passing through a wider part of the Earth's shadow. I have a short demonstration here that will help you visualize what is occurring. So as you can see, I have a ball connected to my equatorial mount. That ball represents the Earth. I have a wooden skewer representing the orbital radius to the line of geostationary satellites and on the end, a thumbtack representing one satellite. Now what we can see on the ground by the shadow is that the satellite is clearly in sunlight. 
So for anybody on the night side of that earth, that satellite would be visible. Now what I'm going to do is slew the mount and you'll see that the satellite is moving behind the earth's shadow. And if I keep it slewing, it will emerge on the other side. So now the satellite is in sunlight once again. When it is behind the Earth's shadow, it will blink out, as we see in my demonstrations. And here's a quick demonstration showing how it might have looked earlier in the month when we had the short blink out period. You can see it's moving through a smaller part of the shadow. So I'll play a short clip that was taken while I was obtaining the images for this time lapse and it is simply to prove time, date and location. I will be saying these words a couple of times, so if you have an Android device, please take note. OK Google, what is the current date and time? It is 11.24 p.m. the 13th of September 2020 in Broomwall. Okay Google, what is my current location? Your current location is Indian Ocean. Okay Google, how far to Broome? If you drive, Broome is 6.9 kilometers away. So as you can see, I'm near Broome, Western Australia, and this is the port. And tonight I came down with a telescope just to do another observation of the geostationary satellites entering the Earth's shadow. There's the telescope and the satellites you can see are Himawari 9 to the right and Himawari 8. And they blinked out exactly as the app predicted and reappeared just over an hour later. And the period in darkness was longer tonight than it was on my previous observation and that matches what we would expect as the declination of the sun approaches zero for the equinox on the 22nd of September. So this is the Windows laptop that I use for my astronomy work and the images are stored in this SharpCap captures folder under the relevant date. On the 13th of September we have multiple captures Earlier in the night, I was able to capture the Trifid Nebula. There it is. And the last two folders are the frames used in the time-lapse videos you saw in my video. So if we click on any of those individual frames, you can see that was the photograph taken by the camera. Later on, when I stop the tracking, you can see the satellites and the stars are actually moving. So the time lapse is made up of a number of single frames that you can see here. And the subfolder names are automatically labeled based on the UTC time that they are created. So this was the final folder for the night. Right at the end of the satellite observations, I pointed the telescope briefly at the Orion Nebula. And there it is. But I have to admit, by that stage it was around 2am, my low interest light was flashing, so I packed up and I went back to the hotel.